हेलो एवरी वन दिस इंद्रजीत गांगुली एंड वेलकम टू द थर्ड टॉपिक फ्रॉम द थर्ड चैप्टर ऑफ हिस्ट्री टूवर्ड्स सिविल डिसऑबेंस डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई होप यू रिमेंबर दैट इन नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी टू गांधी जी डिसाइडेड टू कॉल ऑफ द नॉन वायलेंट नॉन कॉपरेशन मूवमेंट एज यू नो दैट द चौरी चौरा इंसिडेंट वॉज रिस्पॉन्सिबल बिहाइंड इट गांधी जी फेल दैट the movement was turning violent in many places and satyagrahis needed to be properly trained before they would be ready for any mass struggles in march 1922 gandhi ji was arrested and sentenced 6 years imprisonment remember students the withdrawal of non cooperation movement and imprisonment of gandhi ji led to the stagnation in the political system of indian national congress some of the congress leaders were tired by these mass struggles and wanted to participate in elections to the provincial councils because they felt that it was important to oppose british policies within councils therefore in 1923 swaraj party was founded by Chitranjan Das and Motilal Nehru within the Congress. Remember, students, Swaraj Party was very important for one mark question in board examination. Okay, let me tell you two, uh, some interesting fact about these two leaders. Deshbandhu Chitranjan Das was the renowned lawyer from Bengal, and he was also the first mayor of Kolkata Municipal Corporation. and i hope you are familiar with the name of motilal nehru motilal nehru was the father of pandit jawaharlal nehru okay by the late 1920s economic depression felt in agriculture agriculture prices began to fall from 1926 peasants found it difficult to sell their harvest and pay their revenue by 1930 the countryside was in turmoil in 1927 the new british government in england constituted a statutory commission under sir john simon and the commission was named as the simon commission its main objective was look into the functioning of the constitutional system in india and suggest changes remember students Simon Commission is very important for one mark question in board examination, but the problem is that Simon Commission did not have any Indian members; all are British. So Indians boycotted the Simon Commission. Remember, student, this is also important for one mark question. Why? That is why Indians boycotted the Simon Commission. So in the year nineteen twenty eight, Simon Commission arrived in India, and greeted with slogan go back simon many political parties such as all uh, muslim league indian national congress they participated in the demonstration against the simon commission anyway in october 1929 viceroy lord arwin gave a vague offer of dominion status i hope you know the meaning of dominion status it is self rule that is a proposal was given by the british before the first world war okay so finally after after that proposal in december 1929 the congress leaders met at the lahore session of congress remember student the lahore session of congress was very important for three mark question these lahore session of congress was presided by pandit jawala nehru and the congress leader demanded for purno swaraj in this meeting and they also declared that from the next year that is from 1930 26 january would be celebrated as independence day and a tricolor flag will be hoisted in many places of india okay and remember students this tricolor flag is a swaraj flag and the swaraj flag was designed by mahatma gandhi remember students mahatma gandhi completed his imprisonment and he also joined the meeting in the lahore session of congress i will show you the design of swaraj flag in my next video okay and the congress leader also decided that 
they will send uh, several demands to Lord Arwin and if the demand would be neglected by the British government then they will organize non-violent civil disobedience movement. So in January 1930 Gandhiji sent a letter to Viceroy Arwin stating 11 demands. The most tiring of all was the demand to abolish salt tax. In that time, salt was a taxable item and, and the British had a monopoly over the production of salt. So Gandhiji believed that now it was the time to organize movement and to unite Indians because salt is something which is consumed by both rich and poor. So Gandhiji decided to organize a movement on the basis of salt. So as you all know that Lord Arwin was not interested that by the uh, Lord interested with the demands of Indian National Congress. So on 11 March 1930, Gandhiji started Salt March from Savarnadi Ashram. In this Salt March, Gandhiji was accompanied by 78 of his trusted volunteers. The march was over 240 miles from Gandhiji's ashram in Sabarmati to the Gujarat coastal town of Dandi. So remember students, Salt March also known as Dandi March. The volunteers walked for 24 days, about 10 miles a day. Thousands came to hear Mahatma Gandhi wherever he stopped and he told them what he meant by Swaraj and asked them to peacefully defy the British government. On 6th April, Gandhiji reached Dandi and ceremonially violated the salt law, manufacturing salt by boiling seawater. This marked the beginning of the civil disobedience movement. Thousands in different parts of the country broke the salt law, manufactured salt and demonstrated in front of salt factories. As the movement spread, uh, foreign clothes boycotted, liquor shops were picketed, peasants refused to pay revenue and chokidari tax, village official resigns and in many places forest people violated the forest law. Worried by the developments of the civil disobedience movement, British government responded to the brutal repression policy and by this uh, they began arresting Congress leaders. Many of the Satyagrahis were arrested by the Congress and there was a data that about 1 lakh people were arrested by the governments. In such situation, Mahatma Gandhi once again decided to call off the movement and enter into a pact with Viceroy Arwin on March 1931 and this pact was known as Gandhi Arwin Pact. Remember student, Gandhi Arwin Pact is also important. According to the terms and condition of the Gandhi Arwin Pact, Gandhiji has to call off the civil disobedience movement and he must join round table conference in London because there was a discussion on the future constitution of India, right? And by this, the British government will agree to free all the Satyagrahis who are arrested during the, during the agitation of the civil disobedience movement. So after the Gandhi Arvind back in December 1931, Gandhiji decided to join the round table conference in London. But the problem is that the meeting was not, not, was not fruitful. Okay, so after arriving in India, Gandhiji decided to organize the second phase of, Gandhi decided to launch the second phase of civil disobedience movement. But the problem is that in the second phase, the civil disobedience movement lost its momentum. So finally, in the year 1934, Gandhiji decided to call off the civil disobedience movement. Okay students, now I will discuss with you how different social groups participated in the civil disobedience movement. Remember students, this section is very important for both 3 marks and 5 marks question in the board examination. Okay, first of all you can see this is a rich present groups. Okay. Basically, the Patidas of Gujarat and the Jats of Uttar Pradesh were active in the civil disobedience movement because they were very hardened by the trade depression and falling prices. 
so they demanded in uh, remanded reduction in revenue and participated in the boycott program so in this way the rich peasantry participated in the civil disobedience movement the poor peasantry they wanted the unpaid revenue unpaid rent to the landlord to be remitted but the problem is that the poor peasantry were now attracted by the socialist movement remember students in the 1930s two political parties were now becoming popular first one is kisan sabha all india kisan sabha and next one is communist party of india so all india kisan sabha and communist party of india they basically organized peasant movement and workers movements respectively because i have already discussed with you that the congress leaders were not uh, linked uh, they linked the peasant issue and workers issue to the mainstream national movement so the poor the peasantry movement was generally peasants and working class movement was generally uh, attached to the movement of the kisan sabha and the the communist party of india so peasants and working class participation in the civil disobedience uh, civil disobedience movement was very limited next one that is industrial list and marches remember students during the first world war indian industries are a huge profit because as you all know that the british factories in england they usually met the demand for the british soldiers in the first world war so all the imports of the british products stopped during the first world war so therefore during the time of the first world war the british industries they earned a huge amount of profit but after the first world war obviously the british products started the indian markets so there was a loss for the indian industries so their main demand was they wanted protection against imports of foreign goods and rupee sterling foreign exchange ratio that would discourage imports and next one therefore they formed two organization this indian industrial commercial organization and next one that is federation of indian chamber of commerce and industry which is known as fiki many industrialists like purushottam das thakur das g d bilda attacked colonial control over indian economy and supported the civil disobedience movement next the working class as you all know that i have already told you that now the working class movements were attached to the communist party so working class movement was very limited but there are some exception that is in nagpur regions workers adopted boycott foreign goods against low wages and poor working conditions there were strikes by railway workers in 1930 and dock workers in 1932 so thousands of workers in chota nagpur participated in protest rallies and boycott camps so so peace working class participation in the movement was very limited next one that is the participation of women remember students women participation in civil disobedience movements was in large number there were other member, there were uh, in the previous movement you can saw there were uh, women participation is very limited but in civil disobedience movement women participation was was in the large scale i think you know that one of the women leader that is sarojini naidu she was known as a nightingale of india she also participated in the uh, in the dandi march with mahatma gandhi okay basically uh, in urban areas women from high caste families and rural areas they come from the rich peasant households so poor class women they are not interested in those movement and they are basically limited in their households okay so what are their activities they participated in protest marches manufactured salt picketed foreign clothes and liquor shops so these are the activities of the uh women in the civil disobedience movement next limitations of the civil disobedience movement it is also important for both five mass question remember students both the dalits and muslims they felt alienated and deprived in india so dalit and muslim participation was very low in the civil disobedience movement as you all know that dalits were basically tortured and exploited by the higher class people right so the conditions of higher class hindu definitely improved in the british government but dalits where the condition of the dalits did not improve because they were discriminated in the society so dr b r ambedkar he organized dalits into depressed classes associations dr ambedkar demanded separate electorate for dalits in the seven, uh, second round table conference Uh, in uh, london and there was a clash between ambedkar and gandhi ji with this matter and finally this clash was solved in the pune pact in 1932 remember student pune pact was also important for three marks question next the muslim participation was very low as you all know that in non cooperation movement there was a large number of muslim people participating in the movement because gandhi ji 
marched the Khilafat issue with the non-cooperation movement. So obviously there was a large number of Muslim participation in the movement. But from the 1930s, the Muslim failed that they are deprived sections of India, and India is a and they are minority in India, and India is a basically Hindu majority country, right? So that's why Muslims were not interested. in the gandhian movement and muslim participation were very low in the civil disobedience movement so these are the two limitations of the civil disobedience movement dalit participation and muslim participation both are important for five marks question in your board examination this is it for today in my next class i will discuss with you the last topic from this chapter the sense of collective belonging thank you and have a nice day